Bronwyn, Monday, September 24th, 2.55 p.m. A sex tape, a pregnancy scare, two cheating scandals, and that's just this week's update. If all you knew of Bayview High was Simon Keller's gossip app, you'd wonder how anyone found time to go to class. Old news, Bronwyn, says a voice over my shoulder. Wait till you see tomorrow's post. Damn, I hate getting caught reading about that, especially by its creator. I lower my phone and slam my locker shut. Whose lives are you ruining next, Simon? Simon falls into step beside me as I move against the flow of students heading for the exit. It's a public service, he says with a dismissive wave. You tutor Reggie Crowley, don't you? Wouldn't you rather know he has a camera in his bedroom? I don't bother answering. Me getting anywhere near the bedroom of perpetual stoner Reggie Crowley is about as likely as Simon growing a conscience. Anyway, they bring it on themselves. If people didn't lie and cheat, I'd be out of business. Simon's cold blue eyes take in my lengthening strides. Where are you rushing off to? Covering yourself in extracurricular glory? I wish. As if to taunt me, an alert crosses my phone. Mathlete practice, 3 p.m., epic coffee, followed by a text from one of my teammates. Evan's here. Of course he is. The cute mathlete, less of an oxymoron than you might think, seems to only ever show up when I can't. Not exactly, I say. As a general rule, and especially lately, I try to give Simon as little information as possible. We push through the green metal doors to the back stairwell, a dividing line between the dinginess of the original Bayview High and its bright, airy new wing. Every year, more wealthy families get priced out of San Diego and come 15 miles east to Bayview, expecting their tax dollars will buy them a nicer school experience than popcorn ceilings and scarred linoleum. Simon's still on my heels when I reach Mr. Avery's lab on the third floor, and I half turn with my arms crossed. Don't you have some place to be? Yeah, detention, Simon says, and waits for me to keep walking. When I grasp the knob instead, he bursts out laughing. You're kidding me. You too? What's your crime? I'm wrongfully accused, I mutter, and yank the door open. Three other students are already seated, and I pause to take them in. Not the group I would have predicted, except one. Nate McCulley tips his chair back and smirks at me. You make a wrong turn? This is detention, not student council. He should know. Nate's been in trouble since fifth grade, which is right around the time we last spoke. The gossip mill tells me that he's on probation with Bayview's finest for something. It might be a DUI. It might be drug dealing. He's a notorious supplier, but my knowledge is purely theoretical. Save the commentary, Mr. Avery checks something off a clipboard and closes the door behind Simon. High arched windows lining the back wall send triangles of afternoon sun splashing across the floor and faint sounds of football practice float in from the field behind the parking lot below. I take a seat as Cooper Clay, who's palming a crumpled piece of paper like a baseball, whispers, Heads up, Addie, and tosses it toward the girl across from him. Addie Prentice blinks, smiles uncertainly, and lets the ball drop to the floor. The classroom clock inches towards three, and I follow its progress with a helpless feeling of injustice. I shouldn't even be here. I should be at Epic Coffee, flirting awkwardly with Evan Neiman over differential equations. Mr. Avery is a give detention first, ask questions never kind of guy, but maybe there's still time to change his mind. I clear my throat and start to raise my hand until I notice Nate's smirk broadening. Mr. Avery, that wasn't my phone you found. I don't know how it got into my bag. This is mine, I say, brandishing my iPhone in its melon-striped case. Honestly, you'd have to be clueless to bring a phone to Mr. Avery's lab. He's a strict no-phone policy and spends the first ten minutes of every class rooting through backpacks like he's the head of airline security and we're all on the watch list. My phone was in my locker, like always. You too? Addie turns to me so quickly her blonde shampoo and hair swirls around her shoulders. She must have been surgically removed from her boyfriend in order to show up alone. That wasn't my phone either. Me three, Cooper chimes in. His southern accent makes it sound like Thray. He and Addie exchange surprised looks, and I wonder how this is news to them when they're part of the same clique. Maybe uber-popular people have better things to talk about than unfair detentions. Somebody punked us, Simon leans forward with his elbows on the desk, looking spring-loaded and ready to pounce on fresh gossip. His gaze starts over all four of us clustered in the middle of the otherwise empty classroom before settling on Nate. 
Why would anybody want to trap a bunch of students with mostly spotless records in detention? Seems like the sort of thing that, oh, I don't know, a guy who's here all the time might do for fun.